Welcome to Fish School. I'm Grobert from the Small Fish Development Team, and this is the Sandbox Comprehensive Player Model Guide. This series will cover the steps required to create a basic player model character. As the title implies, we will not be glossing over any detail, and I promise that by the end, we will have a strong grasp of sandboxes, modeling, and animation tools. Plus, the concepts thought will easily carry over other engines. All files will be provided in the descriptions to follow along. We will also be including chapters so you can easily navigate through the video. Due to the ever-changing nature of Sandbox, some parts of the guide may become outdated. If that happens, I will leave a pinned comment. So make sure to check for a pinned comment that will explain what changed and how to fix it. That said, episode 0 is somewhat optional, as I will be covering my importing and exporting workflow that fixes many issues beginners face without the need of any external plugin. I will be using Blender, but the information applies to any 3D software. However, make sure to undo these settings if you're planning to use Blender for anything other than Sandbox, like rendering or simulations, for example. So, first off, Blender uses metric, one unit is a meter, which causes issues as Sandbox uses Imperial, where one unit is an inch. If you were to export the model as it is, you will notice it will be very small. That's because a meter becomes an inch. You can change the import scale over here in the settings for the model, but all it does is scale it up by a set amount, and you are not able to scale animations this way. You could use the scale and mirror modifier to scale up the entirety of the models, animations included, but I found that it breaks some quality of life features and has this annoying border around the viewport. So either use it when you're finished with the model or do what I do and export at the correct scale to begin with. You might think that switching the unit to Imperial might fix this, but there's no going around it. The default FBX exporter only exports with metric. So instead, we'll be switching the unit scale to 0 0.0254. Setting the scale will mean that every model imported and exported will be in inches while keeping the unit in Blender as metric. I think now is a good time to learn some very important magic numbers you'll be seeing a lot when working with metric and Imperial, those being 2.54 cm in an inch and 0.3937 inches in a centimeter. In the previous step, we set the scale to 0.0254, which is the number of meters in an inch. As Blender's units are in meters, you can change the length to centimeters if you want, but that doesn't actually change anything, so I'll keep it to meters for now. Since we intend to work on the same scale, but reduced to almost 40 times, we have to set back the clip end over here to get rid of the annoying fog. Clip start is set automatically when changing the scale. I like to set it closer, but you can choose not to. Mind you, you have to apply this change throughout all other workspaces, like modeling, sculpting or texturing. Now, if we import the models from Sandbox, you can see that the scale is correct. However, with this, we can see the next problem. The bones are pointing in the wrong direction. Just like the difference with the scale units, Blender also has some disagreements with the bone axis. In Blender, X is right, Y is forward and Z is up, but in Sandbox, X is forward Y is left and Z is still up. This explains why the imported models have some strange rotations. They are supposed to be pointing to the next bone in the chain, however, here we see that the models from Sandbox use X as forward and Y as up. Wait, I thought the only thing they agreed on was Z being up, why is it on the side? Well, for most cases, it doesn't really matter which is up, the only axis that always matters is forward. When I first started the player, I used Y as up as I used the Citizen for reference. For some reason, if you check the Half-Life Alyx models, Valve 2 uses Y as up. This is despite the engine literally telling you otherwise. In the future, and as well as in this episode, I will set it so that Z is up, but be mindful that in the series I'll be using Y as up. Here we have our player in Blender with all the bones just the way Blender likes them. And since we can't just switch which axis is forward, we'd have to correct it whenever we export or import. Side note, the three main file formats used in Sandbox are, in order of usefulness, FBX, 
DMX and OBJ. FBX has become a standard for Sandbox, it can store multiple meshes and animations in a single file. While DMX is the source native format, it can store some features that FBX can't. However, with time, many of these have become deprecated, while others, in true Valve fashion, were only ever available through internal tools that I have never released to the public. OBJ is OBJ, it can't store bones or animations. Select what you want to export, then go to File, Export, FBX. Limit to selected objects so you don't accidentally export anything else. Object type, armature, then shift click mesh. If you're only exporting an animation, only export the armature. But if you're only exporting a static model, only export the mesh. Apply scaling, FBX all. This will ensure that you're using Blender's unit scaling that you set earlier, or else the scale will be different from what it shows. Let's also change forward to X and up to Z. I don't know what these do, but I might as well. Now here is the important bit. Go to Armature and the primary bone, select X. As for the secondary bone, we select not Y, but negative Y. Why? Well, since in Blender the side axis is on the right, while in Sandbox it's on the left, we invert it on export. If we didn't, Z will become down, as the program sees Y on the right and assumes it's because the bone is upside down. And like I said earlier, in most cases it doesn't matter which is up, however, there is one very specific case where it very much does. This is why we want to be extra sure that Z remains in the correct orientation. Next, uncheck Add Leaf Bones, or else it will add extra bones at the end of a bone chain. Then, in Bake Animation, uncheck Analar Strips and All Actions. Although this is useful if you want to keep all the model animations in a single file, I prefer to keep them in separate files. And finally, uncheck Bake Animation. If you don't, it's going to add frames to both the mesh and the armature, and it will blot your file. Remember to turn this back on if you're actually exporting an animation or you won't be exporting anything. Now that you're done setting the export options, you can save these presets on top by pressing the plus button. I'll call mine Sandbox. And now, if we export, you can see that the model is both scaled and oriented correctly. We saw earlier that importing Sandbox models breaks their bones. Luckily, fixing the import is much easier than the export. Delete this guy, let's go to the import options for FBX, go to armature and change the primary bone axis to X and secondary bone axis to minus Y. You can save the presets as sandbox. And they're done! Now if you import the models, they are both scaled and oriented correctly. I hope the video was helpful as I think models should be exported correctly on the first try instead of fixing it later by adding modifiers. Do note, however, that these are just my personal settings and my opinion on how to handle the differences between engines and programs. There are many ways to compensate, so if you have a suggestion for corrections, let me know in the comments. With that said, we'll see you next time on episode 1. Have a fantastic day!